Good afternoon. So let's talk about eight ways that Congress could approve more direct stimulus to you by the end of the year. Every single way possible. Let's just go ahead and dive right in. The first one is, of course, reoccurring stimulus payments or just stimulus payments. Reoccurring payments have kind of built up some steam in the recent past, and there are senators and House members who have both sent letters to President Biden basically expressing the interest in these direct stimulus payments on a reoccurring basis, as well as extending unemployment and they cite tons of reasons as to why they believe that this should happen because it helps reduce child poverty it helps with a whole host of things and they feel that the stimulus is needed because the pandemic and the effects of the pandemic aren't quite over yet now you can debate that if you want we're going to highlight some potential concerns with more stimulus at the end of this video but i just want to first cover all of the potential options First, the second option besides stimulus payments was probably the most exciting one. And like I said, that was that's building up steam right now. I wouldn't give it a 0% chance that we see another stimulus payment. It really, I think, will be tied to the unemployment rate. I think if we see unemployment float around the 6% figure that we've seen in the last few months, it's decreased very slightly, but 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 the amount of decrease has kind of slowed. And we're right at, right at around 6.2% right now. And I think if it floats around that 6% figure for four to six months from now, the odds of more stimulus are fairly high, where if it continues to decrease and then hovers somewhere around the 4% mark six to eight months from now, the odds of more stimulus are pretty unlikely because a lot of the time, Congress and economists look to the unemployment rate, even though it's not the most perfect rate, there's, there's a lot of flaws with the unemployment rate, but they look to that to kind of judge how the overall, overall economy is doing. One thing you can't do is look to the stock market to see how the overall economy is doing, because if the last year has taught us anything, don't look at the stock market to see how the economy is doing, because most people don't own stocks. Generally, the richest people own most of the stocks. So anyways. The next way you could pot potentially receive more money through some form of stimulus would be through a minimum wage increase. Now, we heard about this a lot before the last stimulus bill, and talks are not over here. In, in fact, we have e just more proposals than we had in the past. So before the last stimulus bill was passed, we heard about the $15 an hour minimum wage boost once the pandemic ends. Bernie Sanders kind of led the charge there. He said, hey, as soon as the pandemic ends, 15 bucks an hour. And they also kind of had a tweaked version of that that would ramp up the minimum wage from where it sits right now to $15 an hour over the course of about five years. And then we have another proposal that would bump the minimum wage up to $11 an hour and then peg that to inflation. Now, this one seems more reasonable. However, pegging it to inflation, I think is more difficult than it sounds. It sounds like, hey, you know, you know, peg it to inflation, peg it to the consumer price index. However, inflation isn't quite that simple. I mean, we're we're definitely seeing some form of inflation right now with like the, the cost to build things just going through the roof, but then regular consumer goods haven't quite seen that inflation yet. So we're in a weird situation and inflation is extremely complex. So I think it'd be hard to peg it to inflation. However, I think the idea there, they're they're in the right space, they're in the right frame of mind pegging it to to something, to have some kind of marker that determines, hey, this thing goes up when you know this marker goes up but i just don't know if inflation is the perfect one and then finally we have another proposal that is in the works right now with 20 or so senators it's being led by senator romney and senator cinema um, this proposal is going to be out soon i'm sure it'll be somewhere in between that 11 dollars an hour mark and the 15 dollars an hour mark but we'll know more on that within a month or so next we have potentially more paycheck protection money and this would stimulate small businesses in a huge way and as of right now it'd be pretty Pretty needed because where we sit right now with the Paycheck Protection Program, it's very likely to run out of funding before everyone who has applied receives funding. Now, we don't know the extent of that. You know, maybe most people will be covered and then there'll just be a small group that's not. However, it seems like this is probably going to run out in about a month or so or less than a month from now. And this is one of those situations that just has glaring issues to it 
where the program simply ran out of money. Uh, I, I used an example of this the other day and I'll use it again. What if they were sending out stimulus checks? You know, 180 million people were set to receive stimulus checks. They sent them out to 150 million people and then said, hey, we ran out of funding. Sorry, the last 30 million people, you, you, you know, you don't get any. It just doesn't make sense. So it doesn't, doesn't make sense that this program would just run out of money while there's applications sitting there in queue. And I think that that one's pretty likely to see some additional funding at some point in the near future. Next, we could see more EIDL grant money. And this one would be huge. This one's probably not as likely as the additional PPP money, but I wouldn't say it's unlikely either. So there's kind of two ways they could do this. First would be the most exciting way, and this would be to bump all businesses to $10,000 EIDL grants as it was originally intended under the CARES Act, and then it was bumped down to the $1,000 per employee mark, and then it was changed to the targeted advance that you had, had to hit other criteria, like living in a low-income census tract, seeing a reduction in revenue, and having under a certain number of employees. So uh, there's a possibility, there are bills in the works that would give $10,000 to all businesses not just the targeted ones. That would be very exciting. Also, a potential change that's that's very likely to happen is to just simply allow new businesses to apply for this grant that's that did, didn't apply before December 27th, which was the cutoff. Now, that one's, like I said, is very likely. The SBA has told me that we can probably expect this to happen in the next couple months. We don't know the exact dates, but there seems to be enough funding left over to extend the targeted advance to businesses who just simply hadn't had the chance to apply yet, which will be exciting. And we can stay tuned for that once it actually happens. Next, we have the twenty dollars to $25,000 first time home buyer credit. Now, I know there was a lot of people excited about this when I talked about it just yesterday. I'll, I'll post the video above here so you can get more information than this brief overview. But basically, there's a proposal going out that's kind of building steam that would give between $20,000 and $25,000 to first time home buyers. And the criteria basically is you must be a first time home buyer, of course. You must be a first generation home buyer and you must be at or below 120% of your area median income. And then the difference between receiving $20,000 and $25,000 is based on demographic criteria. But the exciting part with this program is it can be used for closing costs, it can be used to pay down your interest for the life of the loan and it is completely forgivable as long as you live in the home for five years. So like I said, check out that video if you want more information on it. Next, we have the child tax credit. And a way that this could give more stimulus money to many people would be to make it permanent. Now, this one would not be a huge surprise to me. It seems like we're kind of moving in that direction because there's already a child tax credit right now. Under the latest stimulus bill, they just expanded it for the next year. They upped it to $3,600 a year for children under the age of six and $3,000 a year for children between the ages of six and 17. They made this a totally refundable tax credit. And they're also aiming to make this a monthly payment. So it's kind of like a UBI for families. And I just would not be surprised if we saw this extended beyond one year, but this probably wouldn't happen. There probably wouldn't be legislation on this for a few months yet because there's no rush, there's no hurry, and Congress really likes to you know, wait until there's some rush and hurry before they, <laughs> before they make some action. Next, we have forgiving student debt. This one is very hard to tell how likely it actually is, um, but there's proposals ranging from $10,000 in student debt forgiveness all the way up to $50,000 in student debt forgiveness. I don't think the $50,000 end is very likely to happen. Biden has said that he's all for the $10,000 marker. However, it's kind of curious because he hasn't done any kind of executive order to make this happen. And it's been determined that he would be able to do an executive order for exactly this. So I'm just not sure how much we should bank on that actually happening, but it's it's a potential. And then finally, we have extending unemployment past September, the pandemic unemployment. Now, this has already been proposed by 10 Democratic senators. It's currently set to end at the beginning of September. This is another one of those things that I think really will be pegged to economic indicators like the GDP and of course the unemployment rate. If the unemployment rate doesn't decrease very dramatically, then the odds of this unemployment being extended are fairly likely. However, it's pretty early to tell that would happen in September. And again, Congress probably won't do anything here. You know, if it ends on September 5th, they probably won't do anything until September 4th. Now, there are many concerns about pumping more stimulus into the economy. If we go back like six months, there was very few people worried about pumping more money in. And now when we take a look, many economists are like, okay, okay, we, we pumped 
trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars into the economy. Let's just let's just hold off a second. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Let's just hold off a bit. So there's major inflation concerns. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen here. The Fed kind of says, don't worry too much about this. I'm always concerned whenever someone says, no, no, don't worry. Don't worry at all. We got it. Don't worry. So I just know inflation is extremely complex. I'm not sure anyone actually 100% understands inflation. And also there's a very interesting concern that I just read about today that we're actually stimulating China's economy in a big way through our stimulus bill. So China's GDP went up 18% in quarter one of 2021. And that was led by an increase in 38% in exports to the US, which makes it a new record, a new record exports to the US from China. Meanwhile, United States retail sales jump 14% in the same quarter. So some are arguing that we're actually stimulating China more than the US with these stimulus bills, but then it's kind of like, I don't know what the solution to that would be. So, so there's potential concerns, but there's a lot of potential options as to how more stimulus could happen and only time will tell as to whether these things actually happen or not. So I'd like to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.